we'll be taking a pre-existing model that I've already done, apply the loading, run the simulation and generate the contour plot. That's what we're going to do in this video. If you're interested, sit back and relax as we get started with the video. So in terms of the shade, it's very, very interesting, especially because I'm trying to do a pure shade simulation. If it's a simple shade, then it could be a little bit easier. How do we set up a pure shade? So again, this is the RVE that we're working with. For the pure shade, there would be a loading in the XY plane. This is for the XY plane. So first I'll identify the plane that is the outward normal is pointing in the X direction, which is this particular plane, which is the X front. And I'm going to apply a Y loading on that X front and I can automatically link the behavior of reference point one to the X front face. And then when I go to the other side, which is another reference point two. So for this share, I will need these two reference points, one and two. On one, I will apply a Y axis loading. On two, I'll apply an X axis loading. And I'll kinematically link reference point two to Y top and reference point one to X front. This way, you end up having a shared deformation where the y, the X front is moving up and the Y top is moving in the X axis, creating a pure shear deformation. Again, we're going to demonstrate this later on. So this is how you're going to set up the loading type. What about the boundary condition that makes this happen? Okay, on the Y base, because we've got the white top so on the y base i'm going to fix it in the x and z axis and on the x back i'm going to fix it in the y and z axis this is very critical because once you apply this loading in the right right way it's supposed to be then you're going to generate the right kind of shared deformation and we're going to demonstrate this later on so similarly on the xz plane so what kind of loading do we need so that means first we're going to apply loading on the x plane which is basically what you see here. However, I'm going to deform the system in the Z direction. So the outward normal, pointing normal is the X axis, which is the X front, and then we're deforming it in the Z direction. And I'm choosing to use a 12 micron unit loading, in this case, pushing it backwards because it's opposite to the Z axis. So that's why you've got a minus there, and that's reference point one. Now the next plane will be a shear on the ZX shear stress. So the ZX shear stress, so what would that be? So again, in that axis, so you're going to have a Z front and then I'm going to apply a loading in that form to now create this XZ deformation as a pure shear. And then the, in terms of the boundary condition that we're going to use, we get a boundary condition where you constrain the X back and then constrain the Z back to create the actual shared deformation. So this is really very interesting because if you don't get it right, then you're going to get the wrong deformation. Then finally, on the YZ plane, we'll get a similar thing. So there will be a Z plane where I'm applying a loading in the Y direction. So that gives you the Y and Z plane. So the YZ plane. So on the Z plane, moving in the Y direction. And then on the other case, you're going to YZ. So on the Y top plane, you're deforming it in the Z direction and you're using reference points. So two reference points that you're using to anchor the deformation and you're applying it on these two faces. And then correspondingly, you need to constrain the base because you're applying the load on the top of Y. So you've got Y base. On the Z front, you need to constrain the back in the X and Y direction and then you get the deformation that way. So this is how you set up the model. Of course, we need to then demonstrate how you do this in Abacus. So we're going to then think about the shear cases and this is really going to be interesting. So I'm going to use the model that we've been working with. So I'll copy this and so with the XY shear, so if we open it up, so the first thing we need to know is that we are interested in what's happening here and what's happening on that face. So in terms of boundary conditions, so let's apply the loading first. So let's call that XY load, share load, and it's going to be associated with that. So what we know is that we want to apply it on reference point one, okay? And it's going to be acting in the Y direction. So let's make that a 10. So basically we are now having this acting on that. So we want it to act on that face. And for it to act on that face, what do we do? We need to look at the right kind of constraint equation that will make that happen. So if we go to our constraint equation, okay, let's work with the first one. So I'm just going to rename this, rename it and call it an XY equation, XY share equation. And what we want to do with the XY share equation is that we want what's happening on the X front to be linked to reference point one as expected. So the two are going together. However, it's going to be moving in the two axis. So this is why you have X being the plane of interest and Y being the direction. So XY. 
So 2 is y. So that's what it becomes an xy share plane. So this is the constraint equation that you need to translate whatever is happening here to that. So we, we, we are happy with that. Now we'll do the same again. Go back to boundary conditions. So what we then need is a y x share load. So we've done x y share load. So the corresponding y x share load. Okay. So again, a loading condition attached to the system. So now we're going to do it on reference point two. And with reference point two is y x. So we're going to load in the x direction and I'm applying 10 as well. So basically, I'm applying the load in this two, and it needs to be attached to that. So if we work with that, so let's work, re rename this, and then this becomes the y x share equation. So the y x share equation. So basically, we are linking it to the y top in the two direction, but instead of being two, it becomes one. So y x. So where y being the face of interest and x being the direction. So y x and every other thing linked to, linked to reference point two and everything is fine so obviously we don't need this third one so we're going to suppress that so we've got what we need the x y and so that's in terms of loading so you've got behavior here and behavior there what about the boundary condition so if you look at what we are working with so this is the setup that we are working with and basically what you have here is that on this plane we are going to constrain the base in the x and z direction of y base so let's do that y base so we go and find the y base okay so which is y back so I'll double click on that so we are constraining it in the x and z direction leaving two because you want the system to be able to slide in the y direction you know as required so we leave that so that's what we need and then the next one according to this figure is that we're looking at the x back and we're constraining the y z so x back so with the x back we're constraining it in the y and z direction so we need those two we we'll untick that so that's what we have and then clearly the z back is unnecessary so we're going to suppress that so basically we've got the fix at the back and we've got the fix at the base and we apply the right kind of boundaries so history output we actually need the two history outputs to be in place so we can carry on as well now we do the same so why not let's create the other cases so again so with the excess share so again everything will remain the way it is but of course what we need is to apply the loading first so let's apply the loading so x z so that will be associated with the loading step and we're going to attach it with reference point one as expected so we want it to move in the z direction so and in z direction i'm going to make it minus 12 because i want the share to be backwards okay so it's going to push it backwards on that so this way we have this it has to be attached to the x plane so i'll go back to my constraint equation and basically rename this and call it x z so that's the x z equation now with the x z equation so we want it to be on the x front face as expected however it's moving the third axis so we change this to the third axis and let's share with reference point one so we're happy with that so that's looking all right now we look at the other case okay so what would be the case which is the zx zx so we include zx share so with the zx share which is the other component of this pure share loading so we are going to use a second reference point to do this. So, and the second reference point would be ZX. So we're going to apply an X loading on the system. So if we study it, so we're going to have to apply it moving backwards, 10 microns. So that means minus 10. So we want it to move backwards as expected and then click OK. So it shows you that this is going this way and that is going that way, creating a shared formation in the correct way that it's supposed to be. Now, how is it linked? So Z has to be linked with the X, Z plane. So Z, X. So it has to be linked with the Z plane. So we're going to then change this equation and I'm going to call it Z, X equation. Okay. So Z, X equation. And so the Z plane not linked with reference point one but actually reference point two but moving in the one axis okay so if we go back here so this reference point two that we're interested and we're linking the z plane with that point in the one axis 
So that way we have it done and then we can suppress the Y value because it's not necessary. So we've got all that showing us where the plane of action. So this is moving backward, this is moving forward and then we end up with this kind of pure shear loading. Now clearly what we need to do next is to think about the boundary conditions. So what would the boundary conditions be? So again if you study what we have here. So the back is fixed in the Y and Z plane. So X back, so we'll pick up X back. So X back is fixed in the Y and Z plane only. So we've got that. Then the next one is Z back is fixed in the X and Z. Z back, X and Z will be the part that is fixed and two is free. So we leave that. And then, so we've done X and Z. So that means, that means the Y need to go. So we suppress the Y. So basically the plane that we're interested in, which are this front plane, we constrain the back correspondingly so that we have the right shared information and then we can go ahead and submit so let's look at the final case so if i create a copy so this is the final case which is the yz share that we're working with so again we need to apply the loading type that we need the load so basically yz share it will be a history output and so i'm going to link that to reference point one so now what we are looking for here is yz so yz so that means we're looking at loading in the z axis and i make i make it minus 12 as well as before so basically you're pulling in the yz so this will be the plane the top plane here so how do we do that so we're going to go to the plane of the y axis so the constraint equation is what makes that connection so we look at the y case so i'm going to change this reference and make it yz equation and then we can then open it up and make sure so we're looking at the y in the z axis which is the third axis and link it to reference point one for a start so we're linking it to reference point one for a start so we've got that meaning that this plane is linked to that i suppose and then the next thing is we look at the next loading type so it will be now the opposite of y z is z y so z y share so the ZY share will now be linked to number two, okay? And it will be ZY. So we're looking at the Y direction and it will be 10. So again, let's study. So 10 will be in the negative direction. So we might have a minus 10. Okay, so we've got a minus 10 acting on the system as it's supposed to be. So minus 10 and it will be attached to the Z plane. So I'm going to rename this equation and I'm going to call it ZY equation. So with the ZY equation, we open it up in the ZY equation. So we're looking at Z attached reference point two, okay, in the two direction because we're interested in Y. So that's what ZY will, will look like and it's linked to that. So if I select that, so it basically tells me what's happening here, it's translated to that. If I look at that, this other one, what's happening there is translated to that. And then the X one can be suppressed. So the history outputs will be applicable. So let's work out what the reactions would be. So in terms of this, so the reactions will be first, we need to fix the Y base in the X and Z. So Y base in the X and Z, so that's fixed. And then the back in the X and Y. So the back in the X and Y, so fixed. That means the X back would have to be suppressed. So with all that, we create the models and we submit and get our result. So if we then look at the share cases, so what do we see with the share? So this is really very interesting. Remember this is a, an in-plane share case. So we, we, we have a problem, a, a simulation like this, where there's a sharing of that. So that phase is really what's experiencing a lot of sharing compared to that. So again, this is quite arbitrary, but at least it's telling you interestingly what's happening. So we look at the plastic deformation. There's also the plasticity built up in the material. Um, as that top plane seems to be sharing across and failing plastically. So that's what you see in share. You know, in other cases, you may see different variation, but it doesn't really matter. The key thing is that there is a failure in the domain and it's being captured in this simulation. So what about the what about the XZ plane? So now in the XZ plane, so what do we do with the XZ plane? So we share on that face, okay? X, Z and ZX. So we share also on this plane. So if we then animate it, so you could see what's happening. So there's again, there's a failure um, through the material as the interface begins to yield at that point, especially if we look at it in terms of plastic strain. So it's beginning to yield and then 
you get this clear share sharing around the interface which again is what you see in the simulation so it's a very clear effect of what's happening in share for this material now let's look at the last one so with the yz you get a similar kind of behavior as the xz and that's not surprising because they're essentially the same similar properties so the yz and the xz are showing a similar kind of deformation it's just that the plane at which this failure is happening is on a different plane but you you get the sense of what's happening and then you look at the plastic strain it's showing again clear deformation around the base of this interface and and that's what you will get with this sort of simulation so everything looks all right now that we've created the domain and we've applied all the loading and run the simulation of course the next thing you want to do is how can i generate the stress and strain data from this video so watch this video next